Hello again, it's Susan. I missed you. I'm glad to be sharing some more from Fierce Love with you, and this is from chapter one. Years ago, I heard Yorkshire-born poet and author David White speak at a conference. David spoke of the newly married young man who's often frustrated, even a little irritated, that his lovely spouse to whom he has pledged his troth and with whom he hopes to spend the rest of his life, wants to talk yet again about the same thing they just talked about last night, last weekend. The topic, the quality of their relationship. He wonders, why are we talking about this again? I thought we settled this. Could we have one huge conversation about our relationship and then coast for a year or two? But apparently not, because here she is again. Eventually, if he's been paying attention, it dawns on him this ongoing, robust conversation with my wife is not about our relationship. The conversation is the relationship. This was the first idea that transformed how I think about relationships. The idea was simple even obvious, but I had missed the formula. Conversation equal relationship. When I heard David, I had just left my marriage and was deeply sad. My husband and I had found a hundred wrong ways to resolve our issues, and since none of them worked, we had given up. Our home had fallen silent. For me, this idea that the conversation is the relationship was a genuine card-carrying epiphany that explained everything. It moved into my head and heart, pitched a tent, built a campfire. It wasn't leaving, ever. If you recognize that there may be something to this idea that the conversation is the relationship, then if the conversation stops, well, you can do the math. Or if you and your partner add another topic to the list of things you can't talk about because it would wreck another weekend, all of the possibilities for the relationship grow smaller and all of the possibilities for the individuals in the relationship grow smaller until one day you realize that you are making yourself quite small in every conversation, behaving as if you're just the space around your shoes engaged in yet another three-minute conversation so empty of meaning it crackles. When our conversations become constrained, when we avoid topics that might cause upset, when we accept behavior or comments that are hurtful, we are no longer aiming for harmony, but rather a sort of deafness that allows us to stay in a relationship longer than we should. Our senses become dulled, and we end up settling, even when we are anguished. Here's the good news. While no single conversation is guaranteed to change the trajectory of a relationship or a life, any single conversation can. But not just any conversation. Our usual ones aren't conversations at all. The word conversation comes from the Latin conversare, which means to associate with an exchange of ideas and sentiments. It begins with con, C-O-N, which is Spanish for with. Sadly, many people don't have conversations. They have versations. There is no talking with. There's only talking to. In addition to talking with versus to your partner, a conversation capable of changing the trajectory of your relationship must be fierce. So before going any further, let's clarify what this means. What is a fierce conversation? The simplest definition is one in which we come out from behind ourselves into our conversations and make them real by disclosing what we really think and feel. Many people are in relationships where they don't feel seen or understood. It would be a mistake to blame this on someone else. If we wish to be seen, we have to show up. We have to be real. 
Given this definition, I'm always puzzled when people demure, well, you're not suggesting that all our conversations have to be fierce, are you? Well, since at its most fundamental, fierce conversations are about being real, then yes, I'd like all of my conversations to be fierce. And while some people fear being real, it's the unreal conversations that should scare us to death because they are incredibly expensive. Being real doesn't mean that you must disclose every thought you've ever had or everything you've ever done. There are chapters in every life that do not need to be read aloud. Fierce conversations do, however, require emotional honesty. For example, telling someone how you are feeling in the moment or sharing that something your partner said or did hurt you angered you, or warmed your heart, making you feel even closer to your partner. You may be asking yourself, well, how real should I be? Doesn't that require some tiptoeing so as not to upset my partner? Shouldn't I be careful about what I say? Nope. A careful conversation is almost always a failed conversation because it simply postpones the conversation that wants and needs to take place. In fact, the fear of hurting someone is most often an excuse for our own cowardice. So no more dancing around the issue. You're going straight in. But you will do it in such a way that no matter the topic, the conversation will enrich your relationship.